When we think about inclusive environments, we have to think about the word inclusive. The root word of the word inclusive is include. Inclusive means to include all, to include all children. And that means children with disabilities, children that are gifted, children that are what we call typical, just the average child. And so when we think about inclusive environments, we have to think about what it is um, or how we can include all children. And we do that through something called differentiated instruction. And that all that means is the different instruction to meet the child where each child is at. So if a child is developmentally at a two-year-old level, you plan instruction for that level. If a child is developmentally at a four-year-old level, you plan instruction for that level. A child can be advanced cognitively, that means in their thinking, but possibly socially not be advanced. Um, oftentimes we see children come into kindergarten and they may be reading already and their parents think that they're gifted. Well, they're, they're certainly intelligent if they're reading. However, they may have spent all their time be learning how to read and no time learning how to socialize. So it's important that we cover all the domains and that's their social emotional domain, their cognitive domain, and their motor skills. And you as a teacher are going to plan developmentally appropriate practices within the classroom that differentiates their instruction in order to include everybody. Now, when we think about some of the things that children make children different, there's a whole big range of what makes children different. Oftentimes, when young children come into a classroom, we don't know, um, we know something is going on, but we don't know exactly what it is. They're, they haven't developed enough to be able to diagnose what it is. Um, oftentimes when we look at children's intelligence, um, we, intelligence is measured on two measures. One is kind of a mathematical, logical measure, and the other is sort of a English language sort of measure. Now, those two measures, when you think about it, math and English, only measure with certain types of learners. If you think about learning, learning can happen and you can be smart in lots of different ways. If you look at Howard Gardner's theories of multiple intelligence, Howard Gardner says that there are seven intelligences, and since that time that he said that, they've actually come up with a couple more, but he said that there is uh, kinesthetic, which is bodily movement, there is uh, logical, mathematical, which is math, um, so if you're smart in that, you'll do well on part of your IQ test. There's linguistics, which is language. If you're smart in that, you'll do part, smart in the other part of the IQ test. There's musical intelligence. There's interpersonal intelligence, which means you, you work well in groups and like to work uh, cooperatively. There's intrapersonal. Intrapersonal means you work well by yourself, you like to reflect and think, and believe it or not, you can be both of those. You can work well in a group, and you can work well by yourself, too. And then there's, um, I think I left out, art, I believe, is the other one that I left out. Art, music. Um, and so when you think about all those different kinds of intelligences, and you go back to measuring IQ, IQ is basically math and English. And so if a child's IQ is measured, and they score low, it could be that they're just not smart in um, math or English. And when I say not smart, I mean that's not their predominant way that they learn. I don't mean that they're unintelligent in that. Now, um, normal IQ is considered between 90 and 110. Now, just because someone is over here on 80 or over here on 125, does it mean that they are retarded? This is the uh, word that has been heard in the past, but uh, now they call it mentally challenged. And doesn't mean that they are a genius or exceptionally gifted. It just means that the normal, the average, mo most people fall between 90 and 110. I've had students who scored 68, 68 IQ, and they made the honor roll every single semester until they graduated from high school. 
So um, there's a lot that can be said about IQ. IQ is just a, is just a tool to use to help a child understand how a child develops. When we think about how a child learns, it's really important to set up our classrooms in a way that is uh, conducive to all of those learning styles. And so if you went into an early childhood classroom, you should see a dramatic play section, you should see a block section, you should see manipulatives, you should see science and nature, sand and water, an art section, a music and movement section, place for them to go play by themselves, a um, place for them to a comfy area for them to go off by themselves. So it's important to set up our environment in such a way that um, is conducive to learning. The most important thing you need to learn is that children learn through play. That is developmentally appropriate practice. Young children learn through play. When they're stacking blocks, they're learning geometry. When they're doing puzzles, they're learning math. When they're um, doing music and movement, they're learning gross motor skills. So you can see where each and everything that a child does is connected to how they are prepared for learning when they enter school.